Hello, everybody. We're excited to see. We see we, that we've already got a lot of people. We already have a hey. Nice. That are excited to back. Hmm. Mike even has. Hey, Michael. A copy of the recording is going to live on you, and you guys can watch as times you want. Plus, Jorge's got stuff. I got a hi, Jorge and Pete. We got John, hi, from Stockholm, uh, California. I used to live out in California. Nice. And uh, just a whole bunch of people saying hello. Jeff says hello. Nice. And uh, Tom, who's been very active in our Serve Challenge. Guys, I, I want to thank everybody so much for your activity in the Serve Challenge this year. I think there's more people than normal. Notice, but I, I've got a new official title. Have you, have you noticed that? You seen the no. official title? No. You can't see it, can you? Oh, you don't no, see it? Look under my I name. Do. I see it. I see it. <laughs> I was gonna see how long it's gonna take him to notice that. I'm looking at two screens. I don't even. I don't even know what I'm looking at. He's he's more concerned about his presentation than my little shenanigans. We all know the Jorge a follow. Life or I was the always not that par does an amazing job. And today he's going to talk about some awesome practice drills and ideas you can do to help you play better in your matches and just be more focused on what you need to be working on this year. Everybody working on coming to see us at Tennis Con Live, right, Jorge? Yeah. Let's go, guys. I want to see some of your pretty faces on the court, the actual court <laughs> yeah. with us. Enough of this yeah. online stuff. So, yeah. So uh, this is pretty cool. We got 160 people on. Nice. I'm going to do my best with the chats. Very active. Jorge, I'm just going to hand it off to you because we already got a very active group in here. And so I want you to kind of take over and and do you want me to put your presentation up right now or do you want me to wait um, a minute give me one second because i'm going to tell you what i hope to accomplish today just so uh, first of all thanks peter for doing this i think it's going to be helpful um what i'm going to what we're going to do a couple things today i'm going to go through some games that i've helped kind of i'm good at creating games i think and uh, some of the ones that help my students the most uh, i put these through the ringer so i know what works and what doesn't <coughs> Excuse me. Secondly, I got to practice my mute. See that? So much better when I mute it. Uh, and then we're going to go on my website where all these games live. You can see them. I'll walk you through them so you get to, you know, actually maybe take some that you can swipe and start using this week. And then at the end, I'll show you how you can get some of my website for free and maybe even for full, you know, for a super amount. Uh, cheap that if you want to even do that. So uh, yes, I think if you put up my PowerPoint slide, I only got a couple slides and then we're going to go on the website. So let's start cooking. Okay, here we go. All right, I think well, I'm seeing it. There right? you go. Practice yeah. games to make you tougher. All right, here we go. So uh, let me get my mm -hmm. little thing here. All right, so if you've listened to me before, we got 200 people away. We made 200. Nice. I like it. Um, so, you know, I believe in the fly play situations. I'm just going to put them up on the screen here. The, the, yeah. This is nothing that I invented, but it's how I choose to kind of build my system. So, um, there's five play situations in tennis, and these are the only five things a player will ever do at any given time, nothing else. So watch. One thing you could be doing is serving, or you could be returning at any moment. You could be playing from the baseline, or you could be at the net or transitioning towards the net, or the other guy has, in which case you're hitting passive shots and lobs. So that literally covers every single scenario. You're never doing anything other than those five, right? So I always evaluate my players based on the five situations. I do drills based on the five situations. Um, and obviously, Everybody has different things, right, that you're strong at. Most rec players, most, their most experience is baseline. And their weakest area, often, is either net and transition or serving. This is just what I've seen over the years. Um, so 
that's the five play situations. I want you to understand how we break them down. Now, below that, you should see now all these drills. Okay, I'm going to show you all those separate drills in some different. Uh, I'll, I'll go on the court, show you how they go, so you know. I want you to really understand how to do it, so you can maybe go out and, and use them, you know, already tomorrow or whatever. Um, okay, and then uh, shot inventory sheet. If we get to it, Peter, I'm not sure we will, because I really want to have people have a chance to go through the drills and understand them. I'll show you this cool sheet. Otherwise, we'll do that in the next one. So what I'm going to do, I think that's all I wanted to do with that. So let me just go ahead and escape from here. All right, Peter, are you seeing my website now? No, now what you have to do is uh, put put present again up yeah. there. So yeah, present, right. and then I can add your website. Boom. All right, I just presented that page. <clears throat> Peter and I got a couple Basically get ready to add it. There yeah. it is. Boom. Which I'm a member okay. of, by the way. Thank you. I appreciate that. I feel guilty that you paid. For like two, for like two uh, years now, I've been a member, Jorge. Let's go, baby. Um, hey, your car got declined. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, all right, here, here we go. Um, here's what I want to show you. Um, the first drill under serving um, is going to be here. So just forget me navigating here. I'm just going to go to these areas because they, they already live here. So uh, in the drills serving library, I want to talk about this serve number game. Uh, and what I'm going to do, Peter, is these videos already exist. Um, I'm going to talk over them because I can go faster. We can cover more things. So uh, real quick, you'll see I'm talking here. I mute it myself because I can do it better. So uh, I want you to think, and this is a game I want everybody to play. All right, This is homework. When you serve, people are obsessed with one of two things. Mostly they're obsessed with power or technique, right? Uh, and probably the most deadly thing is accuracy. So um, these are basic serve targets. Serve target one, two, three, and then on the ad side, four, five, six. So here's a phrase I want you to swipe. I have a player over there. I'm serving. Their, they're not there, but imagine there's a player right there where my cursor is. We're going to call her Sally. She's a 4.0 player. I'm serving a Sally, okay? Sally's 4.0. But it doesn't mean every single shot is 4-0. Like she might have a 4.2 forehand and a 3.6 backhand, and who knows, as an example. So here's your job as the server. Your job is not to serve hard. It's not to serve spinny. It's not to serve cool. Your job as a server is to find the 3.5 shots inside that 4.0 player. You got to look for it, but more importantly, you got to then be able to hit it there, which takes what, power? No, it takes accuracy. So here's the game. I'm going to just keep going on this thing. You, this is a self-test, a little audit. So what happens is, I'm going to demonstrate this here. You start serving to area one. That's your first target area. So here I go. I'm going to serve, and I serve to one, and I missed it because it went in two, right? So now I have one serve gone. Boom, I got it. So it took me two, and now I move over to area two. I already wasted two serves. Oh, I don't know. I might have missed it. Got it. So I see I got one, I got two, but I've already used four serves. So I'm creating, okay, boom, nailed that one. Now I go here to four and I miss it. So this is my six serve. Got it. Now I'm off to here. And the goal is you're going to get a number. Okay. Oh, missed it. So eight serve, ninth serve. Got it. Now I'm going over here. Got it. So that serve number for me was 10, okay? So I play several games, and what's going to happen, without a doubt, and by the way, I have players here doing it simultaneously. I'm saying this is your homework assignment as an individual person. Um, you can get a serve number. Play a minimum of four to five games and see what your average is. I give I you permission. It. Here's the thing. Everybody here should know your serve number, and probably none of you have done this game, or you don't know it. So as you do serve number, here's what's going to happen. Let's go back into over here. You're going to find out, and I go right to here, that as you go, you're probably going to have one area, maybe two, that I, that's a nightmare for you. You just stink at it. I can't hit three. I don't know why my right-handed serves go. So... Besides measuring your accuracy, which I think is more important, 
you get the added benefit of understanding where your weak spots are. Like I have a lot of right-handed players that don't hit area three very well because their right-handed spins go this way. But the problem is if you're playing another right-hander, area three is where their backhand is. Um, so you definitely want to be able to hit to that area because that's going to be most people's backhand and most people have a weaker backhand, not all, but some. Okay. So you got to be really smart, but that's the first game I want to share with you. Super simple. You know, if you get to 15 or 20, just abort the game. Otherwise, you're going to be miserable. So I always tell people they can flush a game. If you get to uh, 20 serves and you're not done, just flush it and do it over. I don't want you going through it. it took me 900 serves to get through it. That's just going to depress you. So that's the first <laughs> game I want to talk about. Now, I call those the ground targets, by the way. So this next thing I want to share with you is the exit targets, which is a little bit more advanced. So for that, we have to go into the lab and then we're going to go inside this one course called tips or coaches and i believe Jorge, you're just a coaching genius man i just love every time i watch right. you present look at me go okay so this is even more clever and this is kind of what i'm up to now so let's again make it big and i'm going to show you some stuff here uh that's my by the way that's my a uh, supermodel wife right there who's a tennis coach. I'm sorry. I've got to go back and show her off. Um, oh, boy. Now I, I messed she, it up. She's so sweet, um, too. That's my wife. She's the she's the bomb. Coach Marty. Okay. So let's go here. And uh, this will look familiar, right? Now I'm coming the other way. Here's those targets again. I call these the ground targets. One, two, three, four, five, six. Simple enough, right? And that's the targeting system you should start out with. Um and measure accuracy <clears throat> but what i've learned over the years and this 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 drill here came up decades ago this one here i invented a couple of years ago these areas back here are what i refer to as exit targets so let me just kind of shoot forward right here okay so see how one is still behind one two is still behind two three is still behind three get that so far but now, because it's at the baseline, um, if the ball exits right through here, Peter, we'll call that target zero. And if it exits Y, we'll mm. call that one. This is six. This is seven. This is eight. That would be nine. Okay, so let me show you what I'm up to here in a second. All right, so I'm going to scroll forward so you can see me. All right, here we go. We're getting to the good stuff. Now, there I serve, and you see how it landed in what three correct but then it exited two it landed in here and it exited through two so it landed in target three exited through target two so what's more important as soon as you get to the 3.5 3.0 level i start moving especially three five i start moving my focus away from this and now i teach my players dude this is more important the baseline because this is where the ball is struck by my opponent Right. So if I hit everything in three, but my opponent is moving around and it's always coming through two, or if I got a lot of spin exits through one. So there's really two targeting systems. You got the ground target and the more important exit targets back here. So watch, I'm just gonna let this go for a little bit. Well, watch me serve another one. Here I go. That went in two and it exited zero. You see that? Two, but it exited zero. By the way, do I want the ball exiting zero very often let me show you up here i don't because you know this is where my opponent would stand if that ball exits zero it's just a turn and a crank this is like a bad location i don't want it to exit zero now if i exit way over here that's another story so let's go i'm going to show you now i got the players doing it so the the simple idea is you're going to put these target areas back here and you're going to refocus from the ground to the exit targets because the exit targets is where the rubber hits the road that's where the ball is struck so watch my wife uh, or watch Tony here he hit and it exited zero that's not a good one okay uh let's watch marty right here see if show marty serves she hit it in the net <laughs> that's no good all right so there's marty coming up so there's marty she hit six see the ground target and that exited mm -hmm. seven. Okay. So Almost seven. eight, though. Yeah. So this is a real clever way. It's another kind of audit game. I'm into these big audit games to help people just discover. 
But this one's called exit targets. And what you would do, a couple ways you play this. If you're playing by your own, I recommend you just do it and take an audit. Don't do any particular goal, okay? And then the next time you play, maybe 10 minutes later, you start giving yourself exit targets. I want it to exit three. I want it to exit eight. And you start thinking about that. Now you're not so much here. This is a great, the ground targets up here in the service box is great for the beginning. Uh, but then it's time to move off. Okay, now. Um, wait, 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 before before you go, before you go to the next thing, first of all, I love this. I absolutely love it. Um, if it goes through seven, yeah. is that better than going through zero? Because a lot of times you're yeah, going so to the back. I would say no. So let me see if I actually do this up here. Because what I do, Peter, and I don't think I do it in this video. So I'll, I'll pause it here. So when I have... So remember, when the opponent lines up, I don't have an opponent here, but they almost always line up in one. That's where their feet would be, and their feet would be in six. Okay, that's where they line up. So if Marty serves and it goes here, that's going to be a right-hander's backhand without much movement. So that would be scary unless they have a crappy backhand, right? I'd rather have that ball exit six so that the opponent has to move away. If she hits five, remember they start here? That's also just a turn and a crank. Um, three is tough. Four is tough because we'll have to move. So zero and two are kind of the problem areas, and five and seven are the problem areas. Because those, assuming your people will line up where I said, those are just simple right into the strike zone. You just turn, boom, it's right there for you. So it's like a pitcher who throws it right down the pipe. You're, you're asking for trouble. Now, they might stink and maybe have a horrible backhand. That's a different story. But... Um, most people are good when they just have to slightly turn and hit without being pushed too far or being made to back away from the ball. So, yeah, that, those are okay, – I call can those I, can I ask you – Yeah. Can I ask you another question, Jorge? Master? Certainly. Master, you've got 260 people on. And let me tell you something. It's solid. Like, no one's leaving. There are actually more people oh. coming. So, so, like so everybody loves this so far. Now I'm nervous. Let me ask you this. <laughs> Yeah. As a as a rec player, let's say I'm a three five, and I always say, you know, I, I'm teaching the seven day serve challenge. I'm teaching people how to have a professional serve. I also say, you know, there's lots of people who are three O's and three fives who have national titles who still have a frying pan grip and can't right. put spin on the serve. Would you right. agree with that? Oh yeah, for sure. Okay, so. If I am a 3-5 player with a frying pan grip, how the heck am I going to hit it into 1 and 8? What, yeah, what, so what, what kind of things can you do? It's going to be tougher. So we know if you have the wrong grip, the continental grip is the preferred grip. Um, and the reality is when it comes to all shots in tennis, there's some leeway. If you see a forehand, you'll see a continental forehand for slice. You'll see a, an eastern forehand. That's out there in the ecosphere for real. Semi-Western, you see. Full Western, you see. So there's some leeway on the forehand grips. Backhand grips. Eastern backhand, continental, two-hander. Again, there's, there's leeway. But the interesting thing, when it comes to serving at the pro level, there's no leeway. This is the only shot in tennis where literally everybody is that's at the pro level is using that grip. So when I had the frying pan grip, because I was self-taught, and my coach was trying to talk me into going to Continental, and the first time I did it, it went like three feet down into the ground. I'm like, there's no way yeah. I can do this. He used that logic against me. He said, listen, you don't have to do this, but he gave me an assignment. He says, go on TV and find me one professional player that's not using this grip. And he told me that I couldn't find one, and I couldn't. Uh, so I had to come to terms with like, okay, if literally every good player in the world is doing this, am I going to be the first one that gets a master killer serve without doing it? Or am I going to probably? So that it's tougher. But, you know, I would say when I had the wrong grip, the forehand grip, frying pan grip, I could hit some spin on it. I could turn my arm and it would rotate. But it wasn't rotating that much. It gave me that much safety. And the movement on the ball wasn't that great. So it'll be tougher for sure. It's just an investment. And I don't know how many lessons in my life I've given to people who are debating that, like, or they, they kind of, they commit to it and then they quit and then they commit and then they quit and they kind of go back and forth. <clears throat> but 
it is a pretty serious flaw in a lot of people's games. And it's probably at the end of the day, like you said, you can get, you know, pretty good. But it, even if you look, if you're a four O and you look at your club at four five and five O, see if any of them are doing it, chances are hundred percent not. Uh, so you got to decide. Um, and I decided I probably wasn't going to be the first guy <laughs> to have the world's best serve with the wrong grip. So I just caved and I did it. But it's definitely tough to take two steps back in hopes that you'll take through this kind of a faith kind of thing for sure. So yeah. th those are great questions, by the way. So those are two serve targets that I would spend time practicing on. Everybody can do these on their own without a coach. You just kind of do a self little self audit. Okay, so I want to talk about return. That's the second play situation you might find yourself in. And I got a really cool drill for that. Uh, I'm going to go to drills, and I think I actually have it in the doubles area. We got another cool coaching legend on the call, Brian Shepard. You know right. Brian? I, I, yeah, I know Brian. He's awesome. I know of Brian. Okay, so 228. I'm going to scroll down here. Um, okay, dice returner. <clears throat> So let's let's go big time screen here on Dice Returner. So the first thing I want to do is just, I'm going to put up this little video here. All right, so there it is. Let me go back to this guy. Um, one of my pet peeves, Peter, is uh, I don't think many people, uh, this will go high def here in a second, I don't think many players, club players, have a targeting system or even an idea of what to do. So a lot of times what I will do, I love doing this, during match play, I will come up to a player just before they're, like they're in their rituals to serve or they're in their rituals to return, and I'll say, like, this is my daughter over here, by the way, uh, returning, and I'll say to them, hey, what are you going to do? And they kind of look at me like, what? What are you going to do right now, <laughs> Charlie? What are you going to do? Tell me, what are you going to do? And she'll like, what do you mean? I go, what are you going to do? Uh, I'm going to hit a return. Where? over the net what part of the court <laughs> uh anywhere in the court they have no clue mm -hmm. so what i do is i just I, I play a big game this is targets right return targets so this is carly she's hitting back this way this is target area one this big back area is area two this is three this is four if you're playing doubles you call this five because that's the area and this is six okay so all i do here is, is just i put these babies up and I show what the target areas are. Uh, one, two, three, four, and then you got five over there, and then you got six on the other side. Now, the fun part of this game is you can play this. You do need a second person, though, uh, because what happens is you're going to have a little competition. So you can see what I'm doing here. I got a dice. If you don't want to buy a dice, this is a big honking dice, uh, just use a dice app for free on your phone. So let me show you how it goes. The dice comes up. I spin it, and it came up with a six. Do you see the six there? Okay, so here's how the game is played. Now the server comes up, and the dice determines the target area. Okay, so they roll the dice. This is Brett. This is my daughter, Carly. She, oh, great. She has to hit here, okay? And they are not playing out the point. So if you know O'Shaughnessy, he tells you you got to do more serve and return practice. Uh, so this game is only serves and only returns, and the point is not played out. There is a scoring system. So here's the deal. If Carly hits her return it lands here, she gets the point. If not, he gets the point. So it's going to be 15 love. Let's see what happens. Okay, here comes Brett. He serves. Carly hits it to that area, but Nats. Oh. Okay, so the server is up 15 love. I roll the dice. What comes up? Six again. Oh, six. That's the other wow. alley. Oh, same alley. But by the way, the alleys are, are the tougher targets. Okay, so he's up 15 love, right? The dice, we're playing a whole game. Like, dude, this is my favorite homework assignment for people who say, oh, my serve isn't good in return. Go, go play this game. You go play a set against your buddy Peter, and you play a set without playing it out. So remember, 15 love, right? Okay, here comes the second point of this set. Return, Carly hits a cross with it. Oh. She's down. The server is up Come 30 on, Carly. Life. Look at this. Five. My daughter is getting screwed here. She's getting nothing but Alice. What kind, what are you doing, Dad? You're a mean oh, dad. 30, 15, 30, 50, or 30, 30 love. 40, 40 love. love. Killing her. All right. So what's the next one? Four. four. I just rolled the dice. It goes to four. Can she do it? 
Can this, she this is a makeable one. Here I'd go a little the, drop shot, little angle drop shot. I, yeah, I would hit a chipper. She hits a chipper, but she chips it wide. Oh, uh, she chipped. By the way, I grounded her after this game. And she, so she lost that game, right? 40 love. Um, and now they switch sides, and we continue. All right, so here we go. Now Carly is serving. And I roll the dice. It normally doesn't come up alley so much, but it did. And you love rolling out that six. Wham. Out. So now Carly's up 15 love. Oh By the way, she's down zero one in the set. No, he made that. Oh, wait. Re go back. No, see, red means mad. out. Oh, watch. I have I have cool graphics, man. Watch these red radios. Okay, just missed. Oh, that's close. <clears throat> Sorry. Oh, plus, she's oh, my daughter. Just missed. Okay. Okay, she's up 15 love right now. And the <laughs> dice called this. Can he? Could he? Uh oh. By the way, if I if you double fault, then the, the point goes to the returner. Okay, here she serves. He hits it, nails it. Okay, so now the game is nice. 15 all. And now let's just do one more point because you get the idea. Uh, four. So I would be chipping this myself. I chip it here. And he chips it, nails it. So you get the mm. idea? So let me tell you. I love this drill. <laughs> this game, uh, I started out in private doing it, and then I give it for homework. Uh, I was so sick of having the same people come out. Oh my sir, you've been telling me about your crappy sir for like freaking six years now, um, and no one practices a return ever. Like the only time they practice a return is in a match. Um, so this is a really clever game. Uh, a dice app will do yeah. on your phone if you don't have it. Okay, so now I'm going to show you one more return one. But for this one, I'm going to go to drills. You've got to get you've got to get the dice though because. They don't have to watch oh, yeah. your uh, presentation um, of the dice. I went and got the dice. And, yeah, and by the, the way, I just just loved you. it. I love um, it too. I think I had more fun than the kids. Yeah, I'm trying to think. Um, I showed this, but on on the internet, on, you, on Amazon, you can buy like 36 dice about two inches by two inches, a whole pack of them, and now I can give every kid one. So it's, it's bonkers. Uh, I thought I had one here, but I don't, I don't see it. So, okay. I wanted to do this drill called it return plus one. It's a little bit of a strategy. It's number 28 in this category. So let's go there. Serve plus one drill. What the heck is this all about? So here's what I'm trying to do. I'll let this play for a second. I'll talk over it. Um, I, I do the serve plus one idea. By the way, this is a term that's floating around the Internet now. If you watch the U.S. Open. If you watch the pro, the pros are always, the commentators are always talking about serve plus one, serve plus one. The idea is you don't just serve, but when you come up to serve, instead of playing checkers, you play a little bit more like chess, meaning you're going to plan at a minimum two points deep into the court or two points deep, two shots deep into the rally. So the way, so let's say I'm playing Peter. I'm not just going to say I'm going to search his backhand. I'm going to say I'm going to search his backhand, and then on my next shot, I'm going to try to take a forehand, okay, because that's my stronger shot as an example. So this game is another way to play. I, I know I'm muting it, but what I've told this player and what you can do is you play a buddy at you practice set, and I say, okay, Peter, here's the deal. Um, what's your stronger side, Peter, your forehand or your backhand? I go you forehand. Say? Okay, so I would have you, by the way, she said forehand, I think. So I would have you play a set, and here's how you play it. You serve on the very next point. If you hit a forehand, you already get a bonus point, and then you play out the point regular, okay? I could be tougher and say, serve, if you hit a backhand on the next one, then you lose a point automatically. So it just makes people think a little bit about, okay, if I'm right-handed and I want a forehand, where should I serve? By the way, uh, I'm going to do a little geometry lesson here. Let's say that this person who's a righty does indeed want a forehand. Okay. So question for the audience. If this girl here, say it's you, wants a forehand, which is over here on her side, is it better for her geometrically to serve out wide so that this girl here originates the ball from that corner? Or would it have been smarter for her to serve up the T and have this girl right here? So think of the angles coming back from there or from there. What's more likely to give you a forehand? I think Peter probably knows this, but 
you know what most people say when I ask them this? What do they say? They say, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, but the answer is you want to serve up the, uh, out wide, okay? Because if I could draw on this, watch, the angle right here, this is one angle, and this is the other stream angle. So just the, the normal angle. Imagine, let's just pick the T right there as the ending spot. From here, it hits the T, and the natural angle is going, guess what, towards her forehand. If she was here, if this player was originating a return, hits that same T, it's only about here. So it would cross the baseline there versus there. So I can manipulate geometry, and if I serve her out wide, it's a better chance that I'll get uh, a forehand just because of where I placed the shot. Okay, so that's serve plus one game. Um, and let's let this go one or two more shots. Uh, here I'm talking to her, but I'm going to do that. There's our serve. Oh, she choked it. Let's go back here. Now this girl serving. This is Amanda, by the way. Um, so that's the idea is you play and by just calling what you want. Like I want to forehand the next shot and then realizing whether you do it or not gives you a really good idea if you play checkers or if you play chess. What got me going on this game years ago, Peter, is I started hearing these stats. And I, I love this. It's the most shocking stat. And I almost couldn't believe it when I heard it. They were measuring Sir plus one. The first time I heard that phrase was our buddy Craig O'Shaughnessy. You know, he does tennis comedy guys. And um, he, it was proven that on the – so both Rafa and Federer on the next shot, they want a forehand. Their backhands are freaking amazing. I'm not saying they're not, but their stronger side is forehand, right? So there was a tournament. They measured this, and Rafa, when he served, he got a forehand 80% of the time on the next shot, 80%. There's, it's wow. way off the chart. If something's freaking going on, and you can't say he's not planning that. He's not serving to smart spot. Feder was like 79% of the second shot. After he served, he got to hit his favorite shot. So something's going on, and I think club players are just like, what? What are you talking about? Never thought about that. So that's a good one. Now, um, I want to talk a little bit about baseline. We're shifting gears with baseline drills. So for that, I'm going to go to this category of singles drills, and I'm going to go all the way down to number 170. As you're doing that, Larry had a question. He goes, don't you also open up the court? For your plus one mean when you go out wide and yes larry if you can get them off the court then you got yep. more court to, to hit into so absolutely. that's for sure uh, a fair question that came to me once at a conference i was talking about this and the coach said but what if their forehand is their strengths um so here's the deal here's how i do it the geometry is a geometry but then it's also case by case right so if i'm playing a right-handed player and i serve out wide and the the angles come back favorably. But if he's got the best forehand or he's hit 10 winners in a row, I have to have the, the flexibility in my game plan to say, okay, geometry is going to take a second place today to this particular dude's strength. So I'm not, I'm going to go up the tee, maybe get less forehands, but I'm not going to have winners getting slammed down my throat. Uh, I think people sometimes aren't flexible like that. They're like, well, coach told me this, so I'm sticking right. with it. And they, they say on that sinking ship till it's underwater. Okay, depth race. I love this game. <clears throat> this is something that you can do with your buddy. Uh, so I, depth race is, you know, when you listen to O'Shaughnessy, he talks about um, eight ways to force an error and the most deadly one. So let me just pause for a second. I use zones of the court when I teach. So this back area, I call this zone five, four. Back here behind the court is zone five and way back. So, so this would be not lit up here and where I'm standing is zone three. This is zone two and way up there is zone one, just so we're on the same page. So what happens is when people rally, I'm noticing that almost all their balls land on the service line, which if you're the receiving player, that's really good for you. And my player sending it doesn't really pay attention. So first thing is I teach them the zones, right? And then the second thing is we we uh, I have two people on this half plane and two people on this half plane. But what's going to happen is you're going to have a little competition. In this case, my let me go back here. This is my lovely wife and my daughter. They're going to be a team. 
playing against these two guys over here, another team. And what's happening is these players have to hit into this deep zone four, or it doesn't count. Every time Carly hits it into that, she gets a point. And the players will be calling it out. And it's a little race up to whatever, 10, 10 times deep. So let's let this play out. Now, if you don't have a, a team next to you, that's fine. You and your buddy are just going to play on your own. You're going to take an audit to see how often you do it. So let's go ahead and let's see what happens here. So that was short. Just watch Marty and my daughter here. Carly, short again. That was in. That's the first point. Nice shot. Had. Okay. That was short. That was short. You get the idea? Yeah. When people do this game, there's a deep one. Oh, that was a long, though. So she still only has one point. That was short, not in zone four. There is one. There's a second point. There's a third one. <coughs> there's a set, still third. So you get the idea? You're having a race. <clears throat> or alternatively, if there's just two of you, let's say this is Peter and I, I call it out. Every time Carly hits it in here, I hit one. Every time Marty hits it in zone four over there, Carly says two. And just doing that little test, that little audit is amazing because people walk away kind of with a kind of a sad but true realization like, wow, I do not hit nearly as deep as I thought. I thought, you know, I was going to have a lot of threes and fours. And I had mostly twos and threes, and I hardly ever had a four. But can I can I stop you for a second? Yeah. So what I want everybody to realize how great every single drill Jorge is doing. Every drill has a purpose, has a goal. It 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 requires skill. And to execute the skill under pressure, right? It creates that same excitement, nervousness. Yeah. You know, you can be sure too. I'm sure Hori's had this a number of times when, you know, maybe someday they get to eight quickly. And then all of a sudden, like getting to 10, all of a sudden they get nervous and they start hitting a you know, ton short. Yeah. And, and you see, everybody always goes, why can't I play like I practice? Because when you go to practice, lots of times you have these feel-good practices and you think, man, I'm hitting out of my mind. I'm hitting great, blah, blah, Because, like, you don't have any – you're not measuring anything. You're not any pressure. You're just – the ball just feels good off your strings. And you really don't know how effective you're hitting your shots until you do stuff like this. You notice that what we're seeing here tonight with Jorge's demonstrators, how often it's hard for them to execute. You see? Right. So they're practicing – but their execution is more like you'd see in a match play, which unfortunately isn't always as pretty as you're going to get in practice. But this is more realistic, being able to execute these drills in practice. Once you get comfortable with them and can execute, you're going to be able to actually play like you practice. You just got to start practicing like this. Yeah. Sorry for my rant, but I just could not. No, I'm, I'm with you. I'm. You know, all my life, what I thought I've, I've been good at and what I wanted to be good at was teaching people. There's the old proverb, give a man a fish, give a woman a fish, you feed him for a day. Give him, teach him how to fish, you feed him for life, right? So I can give you a drill, but I, what I really get happy about is when I can teach people how to properly train on their own. You don't have to. The chances of you getting together with me are pretty slim. Unless you come to tennis con live, tennis con, you, you gotta come. Um, so I want to show people so that you can do this. Everybody watching, you can literally do this stuff tomorrow with a buddy uh, and and no coach. Go to the park if you live. I live in Michigan. It's gonna be ice storm, so I'm gonna have to be doing it inside. But uh, every drill I set up, I almost always have a scoreboard. I have a competition. Maybe there's opponents you're competing against. Anything to make it a little bit closer to match like pressure, I'm all over it. So anyway, depth race is super, super good one, and I, I use it all the time. Uh, okay, we're going to do another one. This one is tricky. Uh, it's all the way in the top. And someone, Peter knows that one of the things I get to do is I get to go all over – the planet, honestly, and coach other coaches. You know, I speak at a lot of coaches' conferences. I just came from two of them. Um, and one time, this guy asked me, so, Jorge, you got all these drills, 2,000 drills. What's your favorite drill? And I'm like, oh, boy. He wanted me to, to pick one favorite drill. And I said to him, well, it depends on 
the situation. Like if you, if I have people who over hit, I got a drill for, for my favorite for that. If I got people who can't get lobbed to death and they can't go back very well, I got another one for that. So this is a drill that probably helped me the most. And probably I would say if I can only do one drill and that's the only drill I can do for the rest of my life, I'd probably pick this one because it seems to be the most helpful to the most people. So it's about ground strokes, right? That's the play situation. So what we're doing here, let me just shoot out. I, I'm explaining this here, but I'll explain it to you guys. Every time the ball comes in, so tennis players, we, we kind of stink at recognizing the three parts of any shot. Um, we focus on the sending, you know, how I send it back, how, how I hit it. We don't focus on the receiving that well. And after we hit it, there's three parts, right? Part one is I receive the ball. Ooh, Peter loop, looped it. I got to back up, go left, back. Okay, so I'm receiving skills. Then I send it. That's what we all worry about. And then I got to recover. Okay, those are the three elements. You just receive, send, recover, receive. So this is all about getting the sending right. So I color coded just means that I'm going to be rallying, and I'm going to call yellow, red, or green. It's not what I'm receiving. Okay, it's what I'm sending back. So if I'm, here's me, and if I get a ball that's really easy and I get to move up, I'm going to send back a green, meaning I'm going to hit it a little bit more aggressively. So seven is my rally ball. I'm going to hit this like an eight, maybe a nine. Um, if it's a routine ball, I call it yellow. I'm not in a position to score. I'm not wounded. I call it yellow. And if I'm in trouble, I'm running or I have to shorten my stroke because it's way back, I call that red. So what I do here, let me just go fast forward here. Okay, so here's the players doing it, okay? Uh, once I teach this, it's just gold, and it cuts errors down dramatically uh, like no one's business. So let me pause that and go again. So let's just focus on these two people on this left side, okay? To, to me, I'll color code for this guy. Uh, I'm going to say that's a yellow ball. No worries. That's a yellow ball for her. That's a yellow ball for him. That's a yellow ball for her. That's a yellow ball. Yellow ball. You get the idea? Uh, okay. Error. I didn't see one green or a red ball in there because 70, okay, tattoo this on your brain. 70% of baseline shots are yellow balls. That's just, it is. Okay. Um, so you might want to hit green. Maybe you wear green sunglasses when you play. But the fact is, the, screw, the best way to mess up your life is take yellow balls and try to hit greens on them. I love to hit green. I was never a patient player. I want to hit it hard and I want to go in. But if I get a ball that's not attackable, I got to be smart enough to recognize it what it is. So I'm going to turn up the volume. I'm going to just see if, if these players are doing it. You can hear the player? Not really. That was a green. Okay, so watch. Messed up. I'm going to mute that. Okay, I'm going to back up. <clears throat> Mika, by the way, uh, was an All-American. Uh, she was a really good player. So watch. That's a yellow ball. Mika's up there. She, she That's a yellow ball. She's going to get a, a short green ball here. That's yellow. That's yellow for her. Mm, there you go. Hey, bam. Now you see how she – because yeah. now her weight was moving a little bit forward. So just having, you know, sparring with your uh, your buddy and calling out loud. It has to be out loud. Both players, yellow, red, green. If you get this right, it's the number one drill I would do for the rest of my life. Just, It's all about decisions. Tennis mm -hmm. is not about perfect shots. It's about smart decisions. And every time you hit a ball, you're making a decision is how you're going to play it. And you probably hit you know, seven, 800 shots a match. Um, so there's a, good, there's a good possibility of getting that wrong and kind of screwing it up. Okay. Okay. Um, the fourth play situation, guys, is net net play transitions. So there's a doubles game here called Cuban Davis Cup. Let me find it for you. Um, it's a corny name, Cuban, because I'm Cuban, and Davis Cup, because you play this game kind of with a buddy. Um, kind of like Davis Cup is a buddy game. Okay, so let me show. I think it's 130. There we go. Here we go. <clears throat> All right, now... I recommend this with four people. So if you get four four people, but I'm also going to explain how you can do it with two people if you if you don't have four friends. <laughs> um, so the phrase I would have you do here is think about touches on the ball. 
touches on the ball. If I play doubles and I play, um, you know, an hour of doubles, like in college where I, I'm, I'm a D3 school, uh, I don't coach a team, but I work at a team where D3, they play eight game pro sets. That's, it takes about an hour. Um, and I did the math, I did the research, about 24 volleys per person happens, which is more volleys than an hour of singles for most of our players, but 24 in an hour, that's not even two volleys a minute. You're not going to move the dial. So this game was invented to help change that. So let me just show you the game. So these two people, let's say this is uh, Peter and Jorge. We're a doubles team up there. And we're playing Marty and my daughter Carly. So it's a cross-court game. He fed it, and he has to go in. And then the point is played out cross-court only, only cross-court. Okay? Boom. He won it, right? Mm -hmm. So we... Even though we play independently, our score is together. So now she will say 15 all or 15 love. And now she attacks this way. Watch her take off. Boom. She attacks. Oh, she screwed up. So now it's 15 all. <laughs> Here comes your buddy. You want to be cheering your buddy, by the way. Transition volley. Okay, 15 30. The net tackers are losing. 15 30. Okay, still in there. That ball. Ooh, she called it out. 30 30. Here comes the next guy. Transition volley, play it out, baby. That is why servers are up. 40-30, uh, come on in. Takes one, volley. Eee, she got it. Another volley, game. All right? So nice. after a game, these two people switch sides. The returners don't because that's like the return side, right? And you, uh, I'm going quickly here. But I recommend you play a set this way. You say, well, Jorge, I don't have, I can't get four people together. How do I do this? by myself simple you play this is peter this is jorge peter serves cross court we play it out cross court only cross court only is magic that's important because you got to go through the people that means you're going to give them lots of volleys um and as soon as it's done 15 love then we both reset to the si i feed i rush in win again 30 all so in an hour's time you can get over 150 volleys per person if you do this game compared to real Are lobs levels, allowed Yes. Yeah, because you want to keep it realistic. And the alley is good. So you just attack and attack and attack. Peter, we turned this into a freaking tournament. This drill became mm -hmm. so popular, and we turned it into a tournament. I'll prove it to you because right here in the lab, check this out, under case studies, <clears throat> Cuban Davis Cup tournament. I ran a four-hour tournament, made over a grand, and this is exactly how I did it. Um, this wow. is just footage of the match play. So when I say I turn it into a tournament, I'm, I freaking turn it into a tournament. There. This is the promo video I did right here to have people understand it because it was like, what am I signing up for? Um, see, I put a line down here. This is a, yeah. this is the tournament. Okay. And here they come and they're playing. This was so much freaking fun. Um, this remember, is great. real quickly, these guys are a team. They attack. They play a whole set as these guys attacking. After one set, they switch ins. Now they'll be the passers. These guys go over and attack. If you split sets, you play a breaker. That's how you prove. So instead of playing doubles, you went through the draw based on how you did in Cuban Davis Cup. And that yeah, even evening, for four hours, people were literally hitting a thousand plus volleys. People who never would have done it. If yeah. You just let them go on their own path. So I, anyway, I, I love it. I'm a little jacked you, up about that one. You know what? You know when I see this, and I, I something I've been thinking about lately too. I'm like. You know, something I think would, would spar like a lot of uh, interest in tennis is if the pros had more events like this to where, yeah. because the thing that tennis does that we don't exploit enough on the tour is we've got so many creative games that are so mm -hmm. fun, right? But we don't, and, 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 and you could have all kinds of matchups and men and women playing together and, and just so many interesting um, results and team tennis possibilities. Yeah. They always just put it to the serve and the return. I think, I think if the tour put games in like this, sometimes people would love to watch it and be surprised by a lot of the shot making too that they'd see oh, yeah. in games like this. Yeah. So one yeah. thing that kind of, uh, well, there's a whole bunch of stories here, but let me just get to this one. So uh, remember the final play situation: we serving, returning, baseline play, net play, transition, that last one, and then the other one is passing shots and lobs, which are super under practice. 
uh, people don't do it. So again, all I've done here, this is kind of a cousin to that previous game. That one was called Cuban Davis Cup. This one here is called Lobster Cup. So I'm going to just let this go. Um, and same idea is two people will be a team. So let me just pause it here and, and back up to about here. So let me explain the rules. <clears throat> this is my wife and daughter, okay, Marty and Carly. Marty goes first. She must lot or she must feed this person. It's cross court only again. This person must lob the first ball. That's the only rule. And then they duke it out cross court. That's it. And then when that point is done, Carly goes. And then Marty goes. And then Carly goes. So let's just watch. Here comes my wife, Marty. She feeds it. By the way, notice she has to be in zone one. Mm -hmm. You can't be starting back here. Also, you can't feed a drop shot, you know. Um, you can't be a jerk and ruin the game. So watch. Let's just watch. This. <laughs> must lob. She must lob it, and then you duke it out. Okay. By the way, Marty did a classic thing. When we do this game, nine out of not nine, probably fifty percent of the lobs are bad, and people actually don't have to go back. They got to come forward. Uh, but we all, you know, that's how bad lobbying is. So watch. The score here is love 15. Now my daughter goes cross court only. Marty thinks she's playing. She's not. Watch her move, and then I yell at her. Okay, so watch. Must lob. Duke it out cross court only. There's my daughter. Come on, rock star. Volley animal. Okay, love oh, 30. Love 30. Lob. Mm -hmm. It's love 30. Oh, look at her go. Okay, she lobs it back. Love 40. The Capistani girls are down love 40. I'm talking here. I'm going to go. I'm just talking about the illegal feed. Okay, love 40, must lob the feed, and you go back, and oink, you play it out, sweet overhead. Okay, 1540, the Capistani girls are losing. Skyhook out of my babe. I don't know, the guy call it? Look at that volley. Okay, 40, 30, yeah. or 30, 40, they're nice. coming back. Must lob. Oh, the guy choked it. Now it's deuce, Peter. It's deuce. Ball goes up. Another killer lob. Marty's there. Uh-oh, add out. Here comes my daughter. And because it's Davis Cup, right, you want your buddy. You're like, come on, let's get a car to keep me in it. And that's the kind of fun thing. And it's a competition, and it's purpose. Like, this, like why the hell are we doing it? Because we've now isolated blobs and overheads, and we're ramping up. Remember I said touches on the ball? Well, this game, if you played it for an hour, you're going to get hundreds of lobs and hundreds. So this is how you practice, guys. You can't think about it. You can't read a book. you got to go do it. Okay, there she moves in. There's a volley. Oh, okay, all right. So I, well, it must be Deuce. So they keep going back and forth. You play a whole set this way. Okay, she misses. So add out. My daughter gets hit, but that one's got a pretty good overhead. She pretty does. Overhead. I know she's not missing those. Sweet little volley, or man, she was like a. She finished her career with the most doubles wins at Hope College. Okay, so oh. you see the idea. And then you play a whole game. After a game is done, these ladies switch sides, play a whole set that way. And then after a set, the other guys go. So there's another killer game that you can use starting tomorrow that will give you tons of touches on the ball. So, um, Peter, here's the deal. I don't want to talk about shot inventory because it's already 54 minutes in, and I want to have a chance to answer questions. Um, by the way, guys, I'm going to show you something here. I've been showing you everything on my website, and here's what I want to show you. If I – can you still see my screen here? Yeah, we're, we're still seeing your screen. Guys, get your questions ready as Jorge is um, showing um, us a couple things here. This is what my website looks like when you're not logged in. And what I want to show you – You're on Google, buddy. You're on Google. Okay. Let me uh, – this is one of those things i got to stop, and then I'm going to present – because I, I changed the screen on you. So I'm going to present this one here. <clears throat> okay, you see here? Let me, let me add it. I got to add it again. Okay, there we go. Okay. So this is important, guys. Um, when Peter and I do these, obviously, we love your support. But I want to show you, you get a lot of good free stuff. So I was logged in, but this is what it looks like when you're not logged in. You'll notice some stuff up here, right? Free tennis courses. You can get access today. Now, I'm not even getting your email here. This is re You can get this course. You can get this Middle Toughness course. You can get this Agility course with Kovacs. Any one of these is there today, swipeable, to go enjoy. 
all these different talk about serve targets remember that one it's there for you this is me doing at a different conference so wow. please go there and swipe any of this you want you don't even have to give your email to get access but also if you're a coach or want to learn some drills to do with your friends here's three drills for serving here's three drills for singles here's three for doubles all every single one of these kids large group whatever um cuban davis cup we just did that one here's another one stinger game all right so this is a drill you could do you can watch it again without um any all right um the blog is there for you obviously if you want for those of you who say well i might give it a try uh, i recommend you try this we have this one dollar trial you get four thousand videos and over 100 courses for 14 days for a dollar even after so if you want to see everything instead of those go do that free offer and just don't join you know quit after uh, 14 days um and if anybody forgets and says oh i meant to quit i always give it to them so for a dollar you can go in and watch four literally four thousand drills or four thousand videos so i just wanted to show you the free stuff uh if you want to pay me money then click sign up and then do that um so with that said uh let's i can stop sharing I mean, and basically i it's it's a no-brainer for me I, yeah i think I um, stopped sharing. Oh, jorge right? yeah couple there's one quick yeah you stopped sharing good uh somebody said are drills discussed limited to a certain level? Like, do you have do you have drills for certain levels in your yeah. stuff? On the website, there's a filter, and you can filter for 3-0, 3-5, actually 2-5, 3-0, 4 You can filter all the drills. There's a big filter. You can say, I want singles, I want four and a quarter, I want 3-5 level, and blah, blah, blah. So, yeah, there's a big filter because you don't want to be going scrolling through 2000 drills trying to find them so the um the search feature is really robust so yes hey i'll be the honest search feature is actually, yeah yeah the, the it's, website it's awesome. yeah the website was very much a tennis coach's website it really up until a couple of years ago it didn't have much for players but now with the the courses i got 100 courses in there with and it's not all me that's all for players so that's why players are now joining tennisreels.tv and not just coaches. Wow. But but yeah, way, thanks for some cool questions, man. What 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 are you guys? So as I wrap up the the showing people drills, okay? It's up to you. Uh you have to you can't be wasting time. I had people who were literally, you know, in my classes for decades and some of them, a lot of them are they're just stuck. And Peter said it earlier in the thing, the number one pain point of the average rec player is they think they play better in practice than they do in a match. There, there's a reason why all us online guys touch that pain point because everybody tells us all the research shows that's the number one problem they have. So how do you do that? Read a book, maybe take another yeah. private lesson, maybe, but you got to go out and train. Federer, these guys, they're not calling six people and doing a, a six court or six person drill. They're doing one on one sparring, working out, training. Um, and you can't just always take another lesson. Listen, I'm a, I'm a tennis pro all my life. I, I needed to give lessons to make a living. So I'm not saying don't ever take a lesson, but at some point, you got to have some skills to train yourself. Okay. Um, you know, that's what all the professionals do in the off season. Um, they spar, they get someone to work out with, training, workouts, whatever you want to call it. But it can't just be your lesson. Hey, I've been taking a Tuesday lesson with my coach back home uh, every year for like the last 20 years, and I'm 3 0, and I never got off 3 0. I'm 30 years in at 3 0. And I've always wanted to be 3 5. And it's not for me, I guess. Yeah. So that's, those are pretty. I think, I, think, I, think, I think another thing, I think another thing, Jorge, is, you know, with your drills, First of all, they're fun. You can tell there's lots of energy to them, but you're also not afraid to have it be ugly for a while. And I, I think yeah. I think that, that is um, something that you know not a lot of coaches are willing. They want they want their practices to look good. They want the students having success a lot, and then when 
when people go to practice on their own, I mean, first of all, lots of people say, well, no one will practice with me. I, I don't know how to play matches. So that's another problem. But even mm-hmm. when people go to do practices, they do what I call feel good practices to where you right. get in a groove, but yeah. you're not putting this pressure on yourself. Every drill you did, it looked like a lot of fun, but you could see the pressure and you could see the ups and downs of the performance of the students. It does wasn't all yeah. ugly. It does what all great. It was, you know, it was realistic of what a match is going to be. Yeah. I mean, I have a huge problem in, well, not me, but the country has a huge problem with junior tennis in particular is there's an army. I, I have a blog post called serial drillers. So instead of serial killers, it's serial drillers. And these are middle school, or high school kids who come to my club. They pay for a group lesson. They pay for the second day group lesson. They want mom to give them a private lesson. They wanted a more lesson. And I'm like, when are you playing? When, like, when's your practice matches or a tournament? Eee. So they go the whole indoor season. It's going to happen here in a couple of months. March 12 is the last day of our session. March 14 on Monday in Michigan, where I live, is high school tryouts. The girls' season begins. And the coach is not going to pick the lineup by saying, you two gals, show me how you drill. And I'll say, he's going to say, Sally, go play Betty. Here's two balls. Go play. And they're going to serve them up. And for some of these people, these juniors, it's going to be the first time in nine months of the indoor season that they actually kept score. And that's going to be too late. If you're double faulting and you're nervous and you're pooping your pants, you're in trials, dude. It's too late. You screwed up. So your workout regimen, your training has to have match play. Um, and I think the drilling should be match like. I mean, there is a place for dead ball drilling or ball machine drilling. When you're working on something or adding a new thing. Uh, thanks, Paul, by the way. I saw that. Um, but definitely most of it should be live ball. So it's like reaction. You know, um, I always say I swiped this from, I think, I don't know who, um, that um, there is no feedback or there is no losing. Or there's no failure. There's only feedback. So if you can think of your practice matches, or even your league matches, then, listen, um, I didn't like the fact that I played Jasmine today and I lost, but you lost, but it's, it, there's, that's not a failure. Because when I lost, I'm like, I now recognize that my backhand return is a nightmare and I got to go do. So that that's good to know. That's worth knowing, okay? So if you can kind of train yourself to think that way, there is no failure. It's only feedback. Um, then I think you're, more people will put it online and, and put themselves – in an environment to compete and maybe lose. Yeah. I think when you said that, it reminded me of something I, when I was interviewing Gigi Fernandez. By the way, guys, on Monday, we're going to have Andy Roddick on. So be ready for that live stream. Um, so I talked to Gigi and I said, you know, what did you do after you had a bad match and things weren't working? You know, did you did you go to the practice court the next day? And I mean, she looked at me like I insulted her family. And she's like, the next day, she's like, right after the match, you know, like I'm, I'm going to go work on that. And, uh, you know, I, I think that that is, Oh, look at that. Ian West, Ian Westerman, who's also a legend is on. Hey, but, go see but, um, Hello. I, I think that that's a great point that she made, you know, like she wasn't afraid to, you know, acknowledge that there was a problem and let's go work on fixing the problem. And I think that we kind of fall into that, where we don't really have that time to be introspective at, after the match and whether we win or we lose, it's either like we're happy or we're sad, but it's like, okay, right. we won. What did you learn? What, what could you still do better? What did you do great? That can become more of a weapon. And then if you lost, you know, why did you lose and what can we work on? And let, let's go to work right. on it sooner than later um, is, is super important. Um, yeah. So I'd like to, if we could, I, for, First of all, there's still over 200 people. Um, nice. By the way, in, in my serve challenge, you are the prize uh, today. If people send in the ser- a video of their serve, one person's going to get your uh, your book, Tennis Strategy, which is awesome. Oh, nice. But I want you to talk about uh, Tennis Con Live. I just want to keep reminding people, you know, we are going to have the most awesome instruction there. Jorge's going to be there. Ryan from Two Man Tennis, who is – just such a great coach. I mean, he just explains things so clearly. 
Then you have Tennis HQ there, Carew, who is I probably the best player out of all our instructors. I mean, he's he's uh, Naomi Osaka's hitting partner now. Now he's hitting with uh, that guy who's top fifty in the world or something like that. Uh, GG, seventeen-time Grand Slam champion, is going to be there. <laughs> that's not that's not too shabby. Kevin Garlington, John Craig, Jeff Greenwald. I might show up. Jorge's uh, definitely going to be there. So, um, Jorge, can you talk? I'm at the link. If you guys are interested, we're going to be out there at which I just got done helping Gigi with a Brian Brothers camp at Innisbrook. So I actually got to go there. It's a really cool facility. You guys will be playing on some really nice clay courts. Um, so can you talk about what you're going to teach everybody at TennisCon Live this year? Do you remember? Yeah, I mean, we're going to talk about some mental toughness skills and just making sure your workout regimen and, and – you know, I always took this audit. I'm all, I use the word audit too much, I think. I'm always doing audits with my yeah. players, just yeah. trying to help them figure out, like, are you doing the right thing? Are you even on the right track? I hate the idea of winning the race to the wrong finish line, putting in all this time and energy and money, and then you realize when it's really like, this didn't help me at all. So I'm always worried about that, trying to get people, you know, are, is your regiment right? Are you even trying the right shots? Are you investing in the right amount of training? So we'll do that, and and frankly, a lot of people will train. I have rec players; they train two to eight hours a week. Uh, these are adults, um, but you can go eight hours a week and get worse. That's the say. I mean, that can happen. Um, so I want to make sure they're not. And of those eight hours a week, you multiply that over fifty weeks, and you got four hundred some hours. If you really were honest with people and say how many of those hours those 400 hours last year did you train how many minutes did you train mental toughness the answer honestly is like 0, 0.0 minutes i didn't i don't know how to do that i read a book once or something so that's one thing the other thing i was going to talk about is double partner relationship i got this cool document that will go over about 20 questions these are deep questions that you work out with your partner and then this really cool kind of clever on court thing with your partner which is the between point you know we know how important the between point time is and the singles players use a system called the 16 second cure it's very ritualistic if you know what you're looking for you'll see him do it all the time well i came up with a doubles version of that and it's gold and we actually have people practice the between point stuff you practice the point the time between the point is not rest period. It's another performance. It's during the point you perform, and then between the points, that's still performing. And then back to performing during the point. And you can't see mental toughness visually during the point because people are just running all over. But it's between the point, you know, when the partners don't connect or one turns away or one kind of goes like this, all that stuff. So those are the things I'm excited to share with people. Very cool. Well, I sure hope that uh, we can get some people out there. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to it. And uh, I'm looking forward to learning a lot that weekend. We're going to be out there four days together. So, yeah. um, you know, every time I hear Jorge talk and, and does drills, like you did so many drills tonight where I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, that's I forgot about that drill. Like, I, I, I want to so – there's part of me go, I want to practice that drill. Like that's right. – that serve uh, – number you know that's yeah. more important for us totally obsessed tennis players than than our sleep number right the, what's your what's your serve number right i like that and um so i know that i'm going to be picking up a lot from these coaches all weekend and and you guys get a chance to be with them four days and ask them any question you want while you're there um that's one thing that's kind of awesome when the tennis community gets together uh when i was out there with gg and, and the brian brothers it's just such a great community i mean People connect right away because they just love tennis. You know, the, the campers connect with each other. The campers connect with the coaches. I mean, Gigi just really is it's awesome to see her work with people uh, in person. You know, somebody who's won 17 Grand Slam titles and and she's just right there in the trenches with everybody having them and sharing stories of the tour and, and tips that, you know, only Grand Slam champions know. And, and the Bryan brothers were amazing, too, by the way. I mean, they're just so nice and, and, um, you know, that's, that's the thing, you know, it's going to be uh, a lot of fun. So I, I hope you all can join us. 
Make sure you guys go to tennisdrills.tv uh, tonight to uh, check out Jorge's website. It's amazing. I first became a member when I was running a clinic out at Cincinnati, and I wanted to have some fresh ideas. And I thought, where am I going to have fresh ideas with? Oh, yeah, Jorge's got like over 2,000 drills. And I went in there. And what's cool is you're just like, oh, my gosh, I've just got a gold mine now of new ideas. And but when I was searching for it, it's like, OK, now I need a now I need a serve drill. And then like, boom, it's just so clearly marked like, oh, wow, wow these are all our drills. OK, I'm going to use that one. And then it also gets you thinking of like you can put your own spin on it, too. And I'm like, OK, now I need right. now I need a doubles game. And, then, and boom, I went to the doubles game. So it's a thing you could possibly need and more. So, I mean, it's just really awesome. <clears throat> yeah, that's it. Well, I appreciate. It. I'm, I'm hoping people got some useful stuff. If you just go out and try it, one thing I would say to those as you try these games, uh, that hopefully you'll get out and do the next week. Uh, remember, you just got to go through the game. It's the, you're not doing the game to master it. You're doing the game for the touches on the ball. So if you're not winning the game, don't get mad. That's not the point. That's not even the goal. You're gonna go out and do lobster cup. And you're gonna get a couple hundred lobs. Probably the last time you trained for an hour and got a couple hundred lobs was never. Okay, so focus on that. <laughs> that. You know, we're all competitive and we do these games and we can't help ourselves. Like, oh, I'm losing. I'm down four or eight to Peter. And you're all stressed out. We're like, screw it. Just let your body train. Uh, let it get to touches on the ball. Um, and that's the key because I'll do this even when I'm in person. I have to remind people this. I'm doing it for them. And I'm like, guys, we're doing this for this reason. Let's go get it. And then four minutes in, they're like, one of them is in a bad mood. What's going on? I'm, I'm losing. Like, who gives a crap? You just hit 48 overheads. This is great. You know, stick with yeah. that. So just yeah. a warning, because if you're anything like I was when I was younger, I would immediately go to the scoreboard, and I'd only have fun if I was winning in the scoreboard. And I, I lost track of <laughs> yeah. how Yeah, that's, that, that is, that's a tennis player to the core. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, th this is great tonight. Uh, thanks so much, Jorge. Guys, if you are part of my seven-day serve challenge, if you're not, by the way, you can still get in. Go to sevendayservechallenge.com. But tomorrow we'll be going over the biggest problem that most tennis players have. I, I feel that, you know, the wind-up is pretty much a style choice for the most part, and everybody's kind of in the ballpark there. But once – once all of a sudden you start to work behind your head, that's when the rubber meets the road and you either keep with it and have the professional style moves or everything falls apart and you have that amateur looking serve. So that's what tomorrow's uh, theme is with the seven day serve challenge. So make sure that if you are signed up, I know lots of times people get distracted and you start strong and then all of a sudden day three, day four, day five, and you start to lose focus and you move on to other things, which is, again, why people get stuck in their game is it's hard to focus on even for seven days for a lot of people. You know, make sure you tune in tomorrow because a very important day. And um, one thing I want to talk to you just for uh, like two minutes, Jorge, because we talked about it a little bit, but I just want to have a, and I, I could probably do a whole hour debate on this is I also this year have lessons at your level. A 30, 35, 40, 45, because I hear what you're saying. And I know that coaches always talk about the proper grip as the continental grip. And, you know, I don't see many 40 and 45s and 50s without the continental grip. And I actually changed the continental grip the same way you did. Some coach told me, You have the wrong grip, mate. You know, you got to change your grip. And I started watching TV. I'm like, Oh my God, every pro. And at that point, I was young and I was already getting pretty good. I'm like, I want to be a pro. So, He's right. I got to change this grip. And it was a, it was a nightmare. Right. But some of you might go, look, I'm 60 years old. I'm 30-ish, 3-5. I just want to win 30 3 5. You don't necessarily have to change your grip to improve your serve. You know, that if you're yeah. going to change your grip, as much as we want to tell you easy, it's not for a lot of people. So yeah. I've got drills at your level too, in case you decide you don't want to take on that. Yeah, let me, let me tell you about something that. about that because um, I want to make sure people understand this. So obviously, having the better technique is generally better. But you just described an example that I have all the time. Um, I have a 63-year-old woman. 
she wants to do this level. She does. She has X amount of time, and we come to a cordial, friendly agreement. Like, okay, we're not going to invest in this technique on your grip chain, for example. So you're just going to do the best you can with that, and you can still get better. Maybe that she's a three five player and her serve is a three point one. Uh, you can still get it to a three point three. Get better with your accuracy. Um, would it be its reach reaches peak? Maybe not. Here's another example. It's going on literally this week at my club. I mentioned the high school girls season starts, you know, in March here in Michigan. Well, what if I get, this happens a lot. Uh, what if I get a girl who comes in, they're all stressed out. I got to get ready, man. Season's in a month. And that girl says, I'm a, I'm a senior. I play, this happened last year. I'm a senior. Uh, I'm going out for tennis for the first time. Uh, I played volleyball. So she had a good overhead swing, but she had the wrong grip. So am I going to change her in that scenario one month before a season, I'm going to change her to a new grip in her senior year? The answer was no. It wasn't even an easy, it wasn't a hard decision. Like, no, if, if you were a freshman and you had four years left and 110 high school matches in your future, I'd say let's do the investment. But she's, she's just going to, she wants to win, you know, next week not forever so yes and by the way obviously the better technique the better the better or the better your technique is the better for you but the guy with the best technique doesn't always win it's like a 50 50. if the prettiest strokes won then everybody we go doing that but we already know in our sport a lot of times the, the guy with the uglier strokes wins the match that's why tennis is frustrating so i would say for sure, uh, there's two levels of technique. One that's medium, like this isn't right, but it works. And then there's some that are harmful, like, hey, you got a grip here that's going to give you tennis elbow if you keep following it with this hump in your wrist. That's a different level. I don't think we're talking about that. But yeah, I think, I mean, I didn't have, I had a one handed backhand that never really quite had the proper grip. Um, and I just kind of dealt with it and I hit a lot of spin and I could defend with my spin. Uh, so even at, with me as a coach that knows technique, um, <clears throat> I, I think there's a huge addiction to perfect technique. And sometimes you got to get off of that and just like, dude, don't take another serve lesson for God's sake. You've been 10 years straight of private lesson on your serve going for it. Let's tweak this, no, the elbow, maybe a little grip tension. And they're like, done, be done with it. Let's take strategy. Let's go with what you got and move off of that. Because in, unfortunately in our industry, a lot of tennis pros make a lot of money off of people who are technique addicted. You know, you give, you know, if I feel like if I'm giving someone 10 years straight of private lessons and mostly on their serve and we're 10 years in, I probably ain't doing a good job. After a year, I might say, look, I've, I've tried everything I know. I'm not saying I'm a failure or you're a failure, but maybe another coach will say things better and it'll click for you. Uh, and I don't think that happens, unfortunately, uh, in the tennis coaching world. <laughs> Yeah. Well, good stuff. All right. I think that's good for tonight, although I could probably keep talking. But anyway, this was a lot of fun. I Thanks hope you guys that. enjoyed it. Jorge, you go to sleep. We'll be seeing you soon down at Tennis Con Live, Jorge. Hopefully, we'll see a couple more yeah, of you guys out there. Cold Definitely go, yeah, go to um, tennisdrills.tv. Check out Jorge's stuff. Um, we might have a live stream with also with Jeff Greenwald this week. I'm waiting to here on that and on Monday we are going to have a live stream with Andy Roddick so that's going to be pretty awesome so make sure you're tuned in on Monday All right, I'll talk to you guys later take care see you, everybody